The third time management tool is some kind of planning system. This is more than just a record of when things are due, but an actual plan of when and how to do them. You don't need a very detailed plan to accomplish this. In fact, being very micromanagerial about it can actually make it worse for many students. All you need is enough planning to keep yourself on track. This is where many students get into trouble because they tend to get caught in the extremes of either too minimal of planning or going overboard with it. An example of a too minimalist approach to planning is to use the box method. With this method, it's just too easy to overfill a day with tasks and not have any idea that those tasks are too much to attempt for that particular day. This can quickly lead to frustration for students because the student never feels that they've actually got anything done. They never feel caught up. Eventually, they give up and go with either no planning, which either makes it worse, or they revert back to an over-detailed approach. The box approach can work, but many students find that they need more structure to their day. So, some may overcompensate and go to the daily planner, which is a very tight schedule, down to the five minutes. Not only does this take a lot of time to create, it's also very unrealistic. If one thing goes wrong, the whole schedule can be shot, and that same feeling of frustration can emerge. Even worse, because this approach doesn't show you the entire week, students can find that they don't adequately spread their workload out, spending too much time on one topic and not enough on another. This will not only create that feeling of being behind, but the student will actually be behind as well. What most students find that they need is some kind of planning tool that's between these two extremes. The weekly planner is a good example of this. This uses the same week at a glance format of the box approach, but has the hours down the side in a grid like the daily plannering approach. Using this planner is very simple. Create a template on your computer or on an on-paper version. Photocopy that template for each week of class during the current term and fill in the dates. After you've done this, you can then put in your midterm exams, assignments, due dates, and other important reminder information. What you're left with is a visual representation of your week. Now you can start planning. First, take out your normal life. Sleeping, eating, exercise, watching the OC, or SpongeBob SquarePants. Whatever you know you're going to do, take that out. Now you can put in your studying. Remember to keep it real and actually give yourself enough time for each of those study tasks. You may use your academic prime time, that is time during the week when you're most likely to do academics, and put your toughest courses into those slots. Also, avoid using academic downtimes. This is time when you're really not likely to do academics. Saturday morning, good example for many students. When students use this tool for the first time, they can run into a couple of problems. And I want to flag these for you so that you can take some steps to avoid them. First, you may be tempted to overbook your schedule and leave no spaces between tasks. This can set students up for a problem because life is usually messy, things come up, and if you don't anticipate that, you can have the domino effect. This is where one thing doesn't go according to plan and your whole schedule is ruined. The easiest way to deal with this is to put in shock absorbers or buffer time to compensate for this natural tendency. I usually suggest at least an hour a day, but exactly where and how much time is up to you. Second, you want to ensure that you have some free time in your schedule as well. It's a human need. You've got to have it, so make sure it makes its way into your planning process. Third, use a pencil. For many students, a pencil is less permanent, it's tentative, it's flexible, and you want that when you're planning. If you don't want to do something on Monday night, no problem, erase it. Question is, where are you going to put it? Is there space somewhere else in the schedule, or would you rather not do it at all, and what's the consequences of doing that? This kind of approach to time management will tell you that very clearly and very visually. You'll be able to see what it is that you can do and what you can't do.